Well, before we dive into something I'm very mm. kind of nervous about here, um, I want to ask you one of my favorite questions, which is to do pick a favorite failure. So I wonder if you think back to, to your career <laughs> at any stage, and I want you to think about perhaps a lesson or an activity that didn't go the way you hoped it would, and crucially, what you learned from the experience. Yeah, a lot of things. Um, it's recently, so I've, I've been a maths consultant now since I finished uh, teaching in 2012. And what I've learned is I've learned more about maths teaching in those years than I ever did all the time I was teaching. And, and now you're a consultant, you're supposed to be an expert, <laughs> and I'm so not, and I'm still <laughs> learning every day. So part of the job I do now is I do intervention. So last term, I was working with year one pupils who were struggling. They weren't confident. Um, they weren't really engaging in lessons because of that lack of confidence. So I took the, the textbook they used, the scheme, and thought, I'll go in and do this. Yep. Had an absolute car crash of a lesson. Uh, they didn't know what was going on. It was great. So it made me really step back and start to break this lesson down, take the bits and, and break it down into chunks, like all this sort of direct teaching and Chris Bolton stuff yes. I've been reading about in the last year. So I really broke it down into tiny, tiny steps. We did a lot of mass press practice on each tiny step. Um, and there was a lot of interactivity. I only had six children, so we start the lesson with them sat in a row like a cinema right, with okay. a whiteboard in front of us, and they had to do some activity. They what, had what to join in. What kind of topic in. was it? It was about um, concepts of multiplication. Okay. And they had to learn that um, three times four meant, so I can write on here. Oh, so let's go. Yeah. <laughs> so We're getting straight into it. So if they had three times four, yep. they had to realize that it was four plus four plus four. And I'll just describe for the listeners here. Yep. So, so Bernie's drawn here kind of four dots with a circle around it, then yep. another four dots with a circle, then another four dots. We've got three groups of four here, then four plus four plus four. Yeah, so this is three groups of four. This yes. is following the Singapore math scheme yes. that we do. So another way of expressing that, representing that is three fours. Yes, so we've got three and the uh, word fours. Another yep. way is we say three groups of four. Okay, yes. And another way is we, we use this sign at the end three times four, over which there's much confusion because in this country we do that far too simply. In effect, it's a lot more complex than we, we normally do. Oh. So in, in Chinese, they have two, two words for that times there. So three. Three times four. Does it mean word. three fours or does it mean three multiplied by four? And there are different concepts. Oh, right. But this they, and this was only year one, so they had God. to get all these concepts. The scheme we use, all these concepts came in at once, and that wasn't working for them. So I had to take each different concept and just start with this one. Gee, so the visual one. Yeah, kind so of the, we, the and then we would do mass practice. So we'd first of all just draw one group with four in there. Yes. And we say, how can we say that? It's just a four. And then I tried to do intelligent practice, so each question was linked to the next yeah, one. Yeah, nice. So what's this? This is two fours. When we started this originally, they'd start counting them all again. Yes. And it's like, no, no, you, you know you've got to four there. Yeah. So you can add on another four. So they weren't making those connections yes. and links either. And then we moved on to doing things like this. And th so we'd break it down one concept at a time, mass practice it on the board with them doing things, and then they'd have to go and do that independently, make this with equipment. Yes. And it's the making it with equipment that gets them to see that they are building on it, whereas when it's in a, a picture like that, they don't necessarily see the building, they don't see the Got process. It. And, uh, and when, when you did the lesson and it didn't go well, you hadn't done that breakdown? No, 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 I just followed the scheme, and of course, these children had, had got to that stage, and we're gonna use that this year when we teach that unit, we're gonna break it down yes. a lot more. And so it, it, it looked like being a lot of work, it looked like it would take a long time, because you think, oh, I'm breaking each idea yes, down, yes. and they're doing a lot of practice, but we actually finished the unit at the same time as the main class. Jeez. And they'd actually then done a lot more independent written work. I'll tell you what. So, so I, breaking it down like that actually was a bonus, it really paid off. I mean, there's a couple of things from that. The, I, I'm, I'm convinced breaking things down is, is mm. the way forward, and, and then the massed intelligent practice, yeah. and then bringing it back together, yes. I'm convinced by that. The second thing I'm convinced by is that I would be the worst primary school teacher ever. Like, <laughs> I can't imagine having to teach multiplication. Yeah, because yeah. it's, I mean, it's the classic curse of knowledge thing. I find it hard enough to teach something like adding fractions or trigonometry mm. because I find it relatively easy. That's but, what we were discussing last night. Yeah. <laughs> but something like multiplication, I don't, I, like, I no longer know how I know 3, 4, yeah, and yeah, 12. Yeah. So to try and convey that for the first time to, 
Oh, I wouldn't have a flipping clue. And it's, the, it's this why the kind of the, the visual models are so important. Yeah, for yeah. You. And what fascinates me is, I mean, people are talking a lot about uh, early years teaching. That's what I've really been studying since I retired. It is the most complex, oh. intricate, difficult uh, puzzle to unpick. And, and that is a fascinating world. I'm still learning every week about that. I'm spending a lot of time working with our, our UFS department developing our teaching. And uh, yeah, the further back you go, the more complex it is. So the people who are teaching in the first couple of years, they need to have a fantastic knowledge about the trajectory of learning, how you bring all these ideas together. Because it's not like teaching secondary, where mm. we're going to teach this, then teach that, and teach that. Yeah, yeah, the young yeah, children, yeah. you've got all these things kicking off all over the place, and you have, somehow have to bring them all together. It's a very challenging, difficult job. Because you're right at the beginning of, of oh, how children yeah. learn. And teach other subjects as well, right? Because you've got to be doing that for, you know, <laughs> prem teachers for and English yeah, and all yeah, that. Yeah. God and almighty. I think they need a lot more training oh. than they probably have. The, the first few years are the most difficult. I think if you can do maths, you can probably teach maths further up. Mm. But uh, the beauty for me is I found maths really difficult and I, and I couldn't do it, so I had to teach myself and unpick it. And, and that's what you're having to do with very young children right at the beginning. And it's the most interesting, challenging, difficult part of the whole thing. 